this video is going through and just asking you to find derivatives of different functions. And the biggest thing that I'm trying to help you review is understanding when it's necessary to use a product rule, when it's necessary to use a quotient rule, and when there's ways to avoid it completely. Sometimes some students tend to overuse the rules or they try to apply a rule and make it more complicated when it wasn't necessary. So trying to help those issues. When you take your quiz in this first part of chapter two, when you take your test on chapter two, both will include a section that the directions will be exactly like what you're reading here in front of you. It will just say find the derivative, find dy dx, find f prime, and some wording like that. So the first one we look at it and we start with three terms. We have a uh, negative one, a positive one, and a negative one. In this problem, there is no need to do any quotient rule. There is no need to do any product rule. The reason is because you might look here and here and think, well, things are being multiplied. But what you'll notice is you have a constant times something with x. The only time a product rule is necessary is when it's a function of x times another function of x. And then when you look at the third term, you might be tempted to do a quotient rule because you see the division bar. But this time, again, it is a constant divided by a function x. So you realizing that that those constants make it unnecessary to do the rules can really help speed things along. The first thing I would suggest is to do a little rewriting. I'm going to rewrite this as negative 3x to the 1 half. I, radical notation is not helpful in calculus. I'm not going to do anything to the second term. I'm just going to rewrite it. And then I'm going to rewrite the third one as negative 5x to the negative 3. Again, rewriting it, we don't want something in a rational form. We want to take it and use a negative exponent. Now we're going to apply our power rule. So for the first one, it is power out front, power one less. So when you bring your power out front, you get negative three halves. When you take it to a power one less than one, positive one half, will be negative one half. We'll clean that up later. The next one, the derivative of sine is cosine. The four is a coefficient. It stays in front of the derivative, so we have four cosine x. And the last one, power out front. When you bring the power out front, you end up with a positive 15. Power one less than negative three is a negative fourth power. And the last thing you're going to do is make sure that you have no negative exponents. I'll put that in the directions on a test as well, just to remind you that you want to rewrite it. Just clean it up a little bit. So we have negative 3 over 2x to the 1 half, 4 cosine x, and then 15 over x to the 4th. You'll never be asked to combine this all into a single fraction. You won't need to get a common denominator. But if you get in the practice of getting rid of negative exponents, it'll help us in the future when things get a little more complicated. The next one. This is the one that when you see it on a test, you need to look at it and immediately think product rule. And it's not going to say on the test, use the product rule. You're not going to know what rule. You have to have an understanding of when the rules are necessary. You have a function of x times a different function of x. So sometimes it helps to label them like 1 and 2, because when we talk about first and second, that can be helpful, or to underline them so they stand apart. The formula for the derivative of the product rule is the first, so negative 5x cubed times the derivative of the second, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, plus the second, tangent x, times the derivative of the first, which is power, this is a power rule, power out front, power one less, you get negative 15x squared. The only thing that I would ask is it does look a lot better if you put your numeric pieces in front of the trig. So I'm going to write it as negative 5x cubed secant squared x minus 15 x squared tangent x. You might see the back of the book might factor out a negative 5x squared. It's not necessary. You can identify that in a multiple choice if that's what they did. But leaving it like this is perfectly fine. On the next slide, now I'm looking more at quotient rule scenarios. If you need to use it, when you need to use it, and how you do that appropriately. So if you look at the first one, again, you see the division bar. It, you should think quotient rule, but then you want to think, is it really necessary? And what you'll notice is, in the denominator, you just have a constant. This is the same as 1 fourth times the quantity x cubed minus sine of x. The two, what I wrote down and what was there originally, it means the same thing. Now you've turned into a situation where you have a coefficient so that can just stay in front, and then you take the derivative of the pieces that are functions of x. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, power out front, power one less. Derivative of sine is cosine, so it remains negative. And you can leave your answer like this. If you want to distribute the 1 fourth back through or put it all over 4, that's fine, but this is a perfectly acceptable answer. Finally, the last one in this video, this is one that's probably the most recognizable that it's a quotient rule. You have the division bar, which obviously is an indication. But you also notice that there's a function of x on top, and there's a different function of x on bottom. There is no way to simplify this, so we have no choice but to use the quotient rule. So we're going to start our derivative, and we'll talk about how much cleaning up we need to do as we go through it. So the derivative for the quotient rule is bottom 
times the derivative of the top. The derivative of 2x minus 5 is just 2. Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which the derivative of the bottom in this case is just 1, all over the bottom squared. My expectation on a tester quiz when you do the quotient rule with things that are basic polynomial divided by polynomial is you clean up the numerator, distribute combined like terms, but you leave the denominator the way it is. So we're going to distribute the 2. We get 2x plus 6. Here you're just distributing a negative sign because you're multiplying by 1. So negative 2x plus 5. The 2x minus 2x cancel. You have 11 on the top, and we're going to leave the bottom as x plus 3 squared. The bottom's already in factored form, which is really going to help us as we eventually start looking and talking about when the derivative isn't defined. So it's a, it's a more preferable form. That gives you an example of product rule necessity, quotient rule necessity, and hopefully not overusing it or underusing it.